Got a video here with three past questions on rate determinant step and reaction mechanisms. So I've tried to choose questions so slightly different from each other and a little bit sort of trickier than the norm. So as always, if you want to have a go at the question, pause the video and then play on for the answer. So here's the first one. So the first thing we can do is get the species in the rate determinant step from that rate equation. So the rate determinant step has got to have one mole of Fe3 plus and two moles of I minus from the orders. So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to make this intermediate Fe I2 1 plus. And what you've got to make sure is that your equation balances for atoms and charge. So you can see we've got the same number of atoms on each side of the equation and also the charges are the same on each side. So we've got 1 plus overall on the left and 1 plus overall on the right. So you can see that FeI2 plus is not in the overall equation, so we need to get rid of that. So we're going to bring it in as a reactant in step 2 and I'm going to react it with another mole of Fe3 plus because in the overall equation we need two of those but we were only allowed one in the rate determinant step. So from that I'm going to make my two moles of Fe2 plus and the I2. And then the final thing you would do is just check that when you add all that together it gives the overall equation which it does. So here's the second one. So just as before, step one, we're told, is much slower than step two. So that's the rate determinant step. So we're going to need two moles of NO and a mole of H2. So for this one, the wording's really, really key. So the reaction between NO and H2 takes place by that two-step mechanism. So we don't want N2O in there as well as a reactant. And you can see they've put it in as a reactant of step two. So we need to get rid of that. So I'm making it a product of the rate determinant step. And to get that to balance, I need to put a water molecule in there. Can't have anything charged as products because we've got no charged reactants here. So then all we need to do now is just combine the two steps to get the overall equation and we get that. And finally, here is number three. So again, I'm using the fact that they've said the rate determinant step is the first step. So we're looking at the rate equation. A mole of H2O2 is going to react with a mole of I minus ions. So that goes in first. And then the way I'm processing this one is I'm looking at the overall equation and asking myself, can I make any of these products? Well, I can't make the I2 because I've only got one mole of I in there. Um, but we could make one of those water molecules, so we'll do that. And to get this to balance for mass and charge, I've made this IO minus ion. Now, sometimes in these, you've got to make substances you've never seen before. So just you're just going to have to go with that. Now, does IO minus feature in the overall equation? No, it doesn't. So we'll get rid of that by bringing it in as a reactant in step two. I'm also going to bring in an H plus ion because we need two of those in the overall equation. Haven't got any feature in yet. So there's my reactants for step two. And I'm going to combine all of those together and make that HIO, no overall charge that's featuring in step three as a reactant because we want that to cancel. And now, last step, we just need to think, what have we got? What do we still need? So we've got an H2O2, we've got two I minuses, we've only got one H plus so far, so we're going to need one of those. We need to get rid of that OH minus ion that's a product in step three, so we'll make one of those a reactant of step four, and we're missing a water. We've only got one water so far as products, so the final step is that. And then obviously the final thing you would do is just add all the steps together and check you get the overall equation, which you do.